So I'm excited to kind of tell my story and kind of share why I was, why I was excited to kind of bring this all together. I want to introduce um, Mark Stevens, who's the VP of Strategy at, at Velocity. Um, and prior to that, he was um, responsible for the Oracle um, value kind of organization. Um, so has a lot of great experience, was at Siebel before that. So, you know, so one, another one of these kind of old time uh, uh, software sales guys. So. <laughs> Um, but, but, but glad and excited to, uh, to introduce Mark to kind of share kind of some of his story and this concept of the new age of value in the market. Thank you. Which, right there, okay. Yeah. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, great opportunity to be with you, be here with you today. Uh, you know, when, when Jim asked me to talk about the new age of value, I wasn't sure if I needed to wear like a hemp robe and some Birkenstocks, and maybe some healing crystals or something, but I'm very glad I changed. So uh, just to give you a quick background on Velocity, uh, Velocity is a industry cloud company that's built 100% on the Salesforce platform. Uh, we focus on very specific industries, comms and media, insurance, health, government, and energy. And um, basically our, our overarching mission is to help transform these large companies that don't do a very good job with their customer or employee experiences. Okay, so let's first talk about the value gap. And I apologize, some of these words here might be pretty hard to see in the back. Uh, but this is what value selling is all about. There's a chasm between buyers and sellers. So on one side, of the sales side, the general positioning is we are awesome. Look at all this stuff we've got. We've got the features and functions and the latest, greatest bells and whistles. In contrast, the buyer's looking at it from a very different perspective. They're looking at it from the perspective of why, why should I be investing in your capabilities compared to competing alternative capabilities or competitors in your space? What exactly are we gonna do here and how do we actually make it a success within our organization? So as a result, only 25% of salespeople are actually selling on value, and that results in some relatively bad things, like 44% of them are missing their sales targets, 32% of deals end in no decision. Whereas, conversely, 95% of buyers are actually looking and needing a value story in order to make a purchase decision, but they need help. Only 65% believe they can actually build their own business case for value. And that's really where the opportunity comes into play. But when you don't sell on value, some, not only do you miss your sales targets, but customers end up doing nothing or they start buying on price. So again, you probably can't see all of this, but this is just a typical selling cycle. Assess the problem, and this is from a customer's perspective. Assess the problem, define the strategy, initiate a project, start evaluating solutions, and then negotiate and sign contracts. So in the tactical selling world, the vendor typically gets brought in after the strategy is defined. And then they will go through and conduct some discovery, try to do some demos and such. And then they get down to the negotiation point and the procurement person says, well, your prices are way too high. Whoa, 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 let us do a business case. We can help you out with a business case. Sorry, we have our own business case. And I'm not gonna show it to you. I'm just gonna tell you your prices are too high. So then you drop your price, you discount. See some nods in the, in the room here. Some, some folks have experienced that. So let's contrast that with a more strategic, value-based selling approach. Here, the engagement starts at the very beginning to help frame the problem, frame the opportunity for the customer help shape the overall strategy. So there was a study conducted by Forrester that said that 74% of deals are won by the vendor who can help shape the strategy. So it's very important, critical, to get involved earlier in the sales cycle. So then, not just the business case or the opportunity, but start talking about value now at the very earliest stages of your relationship with your prospect. Then when we get down to presenting that vision, you're able to maintain your price and win the deal. So effective value selling does a number of things. It helps you elevate the conversation, move from more of an RFP responsive mode to one that is aligned with senior business goals and objectives, increase deal size, 
by understanding the customer's overarching needs and being able to position a broader portfolio of your solutions. Accelerate the deal by aligning what the customer is looking for, what the business leaders are looking for with your solutions and a clear roadmap of how to achieve maximum value and impact. And then also defend your price. Now, there's a bunch of great statistics here from a lot of different sources. Uh, one of the things that uh, my team does every quarter uh, to, to sort of fuel the, uh, the organization of value and try to permeate value throughout everything we do in our company is we take a look at all of the opportunities in the company, which ones were we involved in and which ones were we not involved in. And we see these kind of figures, a 2x increase in close rate, 30%, reduction in sales cycle time. So this stuff works. So um, earlier, before I got on, someone, you know, rudely called me old, but I guess I am. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so yeah, I did spend some time at Oracle, uh, leading the value selling team there. Uh, and I also spent some time at Siebel. And back at, at Siebel, um, I was originally hired to build a new strategy consulting practice focused on go-to-market strategy, where we would help our clients um, understand how to go to market with marketing sales service processes. So we hired a bunch of smart people from places like McKinsey and Bain and Booz Allen and embarked upon that as a business strategy. At the same time, we started to take those smart people and put them on the largest deals in the company. So rather than try to become uh, a five, ten million dollar consulting business, we were looking at two hundred million dollars of pipeline. And how could we influence that? And we like to think that that's sort of the dawn of value selling as we know it today. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure value selling is happening with the cavemen. The difference is that there are new tools and capabilities and methods and processes. And it's quite a lot different from our days at Siebel from where we are today. So back then, there were very long deal cycles. We were brought in to close the deal, help close the deal. We would only be working on the top echelon of deals, and we would be putting forth these smart management consultant types to engage with senior executives, understand the issues and challenges, lay out a set of recommendations, and lay out an overall roadmap and value case. And oftentimes, though, the predominant buyer was still the CIO. So today, deal cycles are much quicker, and it's not just about closing the deal. Again, it's about shaping the initial messaging, closing the deal, but then also measuring success. So that means you can't just have a, a, a tool that's helping you build a business case. You've got to be thinking about capabilities that allow you to provide early stage tools, value positioning, measurement frameworks, and persistence throughout the entire customer lifecycle. In addition, it's not just about the top deals. It's important to be infusing value in every customer interaction, in every deal, at every stage of the customer life cycle. And you can't necessarily do that just with humans. You need technology, you need automation. You need the ability to scale that capability. Uh, particularly if you're not an Oracle or what was once a Siebel. Um, in order to effectively embed value selling in your organization with, with not as much resource. It's also important that we apply more of a tiered model. So you might have a couple management consultant types, you may have some more junior business case developers, but you absolutely need that platform uh, based in the cloud to permeate value for all opportunities. So that's uh, what I was hoping to share with you all today. Thank you all very much for coming. I'll be sticking around for some bourbon after the program. So I look forward to chatting with you.